Good morning. Good morning. I think we're up and running here. Uh, the weather did what the weatherman said it would do. The storm came through in the night, and here we are. So we didn't need our rain venue, um, which we appreciate very much. The Allen uh, Memorial Chapel, right over there, historic building built in 1889. They were very gracious and said that if it was raining, we could use their fellowship hall. So we appreciate that. And of course, they're invited uh, to visit today too. Um, we have lots of good neighbors, some of, of some of whom are in the audience, uh, who have been invited and notified. I was hoping that I might see someone from Read to Succeed here. They were busy stuffing envelopes for the spelling bee they're having. And uh, I'm not sure they could come, but they're over at the Lawn Newell Center, the uh, big brown building there at the Baptist Church. And I saw Cliff Sharp from Greenhouse Ministries and their neighbors as well. We celebrate neighbors and uh, neighbors past and present today. We're in the city cemetery, which is about the oldest neighborhood in the city of Murfreesboro. And it was celebrating its bicentennial of the first Presbyterian church uh, just about the time that the city of Murfreesboro declared the bicentennial to be in effect. So we'll move on. I've got some DAR people here from the state of Tennessee. They've come a distance. We have our state regent, Nancy Hemrick here, and she'll speak to you just for a minute in a bit. We have Susan Thomas, who is the first vice regent of the state, and we have Dee Smothers, who's from Thompson Station, and she is the state historic preservation chairman. And the goals of the DAR can, uh, include historic preservation, patriotism, and education. And we think we have all three gathered in one little nice package here today. So onward. Nancy, would you come up? I didn't tell you you were going to have to. <laughs> Good morning. I bring you greetings from the State Society DAR at this wonderful occasion of the rededication of the marker placed here in 1933 by the Colonel Hardy Murphy chapter. One of the three main objectives of the DAR is, of course, historic preservation. As we gather here today to remember the founding of the First Presbyterian Church, we pay respect to what all pioneers did to settle communities throughout America. Thank you for inviting me, and thank you, Colonel Hardy Murphy, for continuing to be in service to God, home, and country. It's easier to get out. The Riverdale High School Junior ROTC Color Guard will now post the colors. allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all.
Joyce Johnson is our chaplain assistant. You have your thing up here. Mm -hmm. okay. Deuteronomy 1914, thou shalt not remove thy neighbor's landmark, which they of old times have set in thine inheritance, which thou shalt inherit in the land that the Lord thy God have giveth thee to possess. Please bow your head. We give thee thanks, almighty and everlasting God, for the records of the past which give inspiration and courage to our generation. We thank thee for the lessons silently taught by memorials to events of distant years and to deeds of long ago. We may add our assurances to these, increasing their strength for generations yet to be. Amen. Mayor Tommy Bragg, would you? I'm going to bring you a chair. I'm not going to speak this long, but I want you to be comfortable anyway. <laughs> Don't fall off the dice. Thank you. You can be seated. It is certainly an honor for me to be here today, and I think it's an honor for each and every one of us to uh, kind of look back and see this property, this cemetery, and remember this church and how important it was to the development of our community spirit and the remembrance of our ancestors uh, through this cemetery and through this church and its church community. I'm certainly pleased to be asked to speak and obviously the DAR is an outstanding organization of uh, women's special interests in patriotism and education and our ancestors and I certainly uh, think that they are to be honored uh, for uh, going through with this today. And Andrea, you always have something exciting going on. I don't know how John keeps up with you, uh, but he seems to be able to do that. He's over here taking pictures. John, I want to recognize you. And I certainly want to recognize the, uh, all the persons and the honorees who came uh, from across the state to do this. Uh, Pastor Hinkle, you you find that you're going to get to do more and more of this as time goes on, uh, and uh, certainly the Presbyterian Church has been a large part of this community for hundreds of years. That's an amazing statement in Tennessee. We're not that old a state, but to have been a part of it. Uh, my two granddaughters were just baptized into the Fifth Avenue Presbyterian Church in New York City two weeks ago, so on that personal note, I want to know, want you to know we have a connection. Uh, and it was wonderful. It was a great uh, day. I want to, again, uh, salute the DAR, 122 years old. Uh, all of us can go on the internet and learn a lot about the DAR. But one of the things that I think is so expressive, and it certainly uh, lays uh, on those from the Hardy Murphy cha uh, chapter who are here, and the uh, William Lytle chapter who are here. The DAR includes, and this is on their website, brave women who often performed heroic acts, shared a sense of purpose and pride, and undaunted pursuit of ideals. I think this says it all. Certainly today's ceremony is a very special part of God, home, and country, and we appreciate the DAR bringing this to us for the Presbyterian Church. Thank you, Andrea. Thank you, Mary Greg. We took note of the date today, the 18th of October, and we thought perhaps the bicentennial of Murfreesboro, which ends next week at the end of the month of October, we were trying to get our program in before that took place. We looked in an old newspaper account, and lo and behold, in 1933, the DAR placed the monument that we're here to honor today on October 19th, 1933. So 79 years have passed almost to the day. So we're, we're happy. We're trying to do a, a bit of a historic recreation, recreation here uh, today. And um, if you can turn around and see that our neighbor, Bubba Woodfin has brought his 1930 Packard, and in it is our dear honorary President General of the DAR, 
and former chapter regent, she's honorary chapter regent, as well as honorary state regent, Sarah King, who is a Murfreesboro historic <laughs> person, personage in her, in her own right. She's here with Yolanda, and Bubba Woodfin went out and picked them up this morning in that beautiful car, and uh, I'm pleased they're here. Um, we just, if everyone could stop and say hello after we're done here, that would be wonderful. I'm going to have Glenda Dyer, who's worked very hard to prepare a historical account of this, uh, of this monument and the history of, of the grave, of the cemetery. I got to watch that. Um, Glenda, would you come up? She's our chapter second vice regent. She just got through preparing our very big yearbook, uh, which has 250 members listed, and it's pretty uh, accurate down to the dots and T's and all that being crossed. And she's also taken on the task of historic preservation chairman for the chapter. So I hope you'll enjoy her account here. Glenda, you have that? I'll get this out of the way. Good morning. I'm just going to uh, read a short tribute that was compiled a lot from that October the 20th, 1933 Daily News Journal article telling about what was done on that day 79 years ago. So 79 years ago, a group met at the same spot to dedicate the monument which pays tribute to the old First Presbyterian Church and its pioneer founders. The monument also marks the site where the old church stood from 1820 to 1864. The program on October the 19th, 1933, was similar to the one we're having today. Representatives from the Colonel Hardy Murphy, Chapter DAR spoke. A Captain William Lytle, DAR, Chapter DAR representative, led the Pledge of Allegiance as Mary, Regent Mary Lou Veal did today. And the First Presbyterian Church minister prayed, which he will later, so. Uh, the DAR chose Mrs. S.H. Mitchell to unveil the, market, uh, the monument at the 1933 doc, uh, dedication. And the reason she was chosen is because she was the oldest living descendant of Captain William Lytle, who gave this land on which the old church was built. Ms. Mitchell also presented a history of the, of the old church that day. She spoke of the fate of the men and women who met in a log schoolhouse in 1812 and formed the Murphy Spring Church under the leadership of the Reverend Robert Henderson. The Murphy Spring Church and the city of Murfreesboro were born about the same time, and in 1818 the congregation changed, changed its name, its church's name, to First Presbyterian Church of Murfreesboro. By 1820, the congregation had built a commodious brick church that sat near where you're sitting now. The church uh, faced towards Vine Street, which is that street, as you all probably know. An earlier local historian, John C. Spence, wrote a description of the church, which he called very fine, large, and elegant. He described the first Presbyterian church, which would have sat right in here, and uh, as follows. A brick building, 40 by 60 feet, two stories high with windows with painted shutters, three doors in front, two leading to the gallery, finished off with a cupola about 70 feet high, with a large golden ball on the top and a 125 pound bell. Wouldn't you love to have seen it? <laughs> Spence also described the inside of the old church saying it had a gallery on two sides and on one end with paneling all, all around. Also, there were three rows of seats around the gallery. The whole gallery, according to Spence, was supported above and below with turned pillars that stood at a proper distance apart. I guess that was good. <laughs> so the lower story had pews closed with doors. There was an elevated pulpit about three feet high from the floor with a stairway, fortunately, on each side, and it sat three men. Mr. Spence said all was well finished and neatly painted. On the marker dedication that day, Mrs. Mitchell also told about the state legislature meeting in the First Presbyterian Church in 1822 after the courthouse burned during the time Murfreesboro was the capital of the state. To accommodate the members of the state senate, the gallery was remodeled and they had to put boards across the open part of it and make it a full second floor and the House of Representatives used the downstairs floor. 
Ms. Mitchell also told of the Federals tearing down the Presbyterian building during the bitter winter of 1863 and 1864 to build chimneys and ovens for their camp. Earlier in the Civil War, the old church had been used as a field hospital for both sides. Also, the Federals had used it for a stable. According to Spence, services were suspended in all the churches in the city from 1862 to 1866. Spence said that, in fact, few ministers were even allowed to hold church services during the war without taking a required oath of loyalty, which I suppose was hard for some of the Southern ministers. But after the war, the scattered members of the Presbyterian Church commenced collecting together again. The congregation acquired a lot on the corner of College and Spring Streets and rebuilt the first Presbyterian Church there by 1868. And uh, the church is still going there strong there now after 200 years. The old church property on East Vine was sold for cemetery use. The monument is right back here. It was erected by the Colonel Hardy Murphy in 1933. It's made of Tennessee limestone with a cast iron plaque that names the 18 charter members of the church. These members came to this area around 1810 or before with some of them coming even earlier. They were truly pioneers. Some of the founders moved on from here, but some stayed. Many are actually buried in this cemetery here, which was, uh, which was built when the church was built in 1820. It was known as the Presbyterian Burying Grounds. And the burying grounds was um, established to the east and south of the church. After 79, 79 years of standing in the elements, the monument placed at this site by the DAR suffered damage to the stone and the old plaque had rusted. At the request of the Colonel Hardy Murphy chapter, local preservationist Dan Allen repaired the marker this summer. He filled, he filled in all the small crevices in the limestone, treated the rust, and repainted the plaque. We're hoping the monument will be good for another 79 years or more. All right, sorry. In closing, I'd like to quote Mrs. Mitchell's closing monument for the dedication ceremony in 1933. She said, we are bound by the most sacred ties to the pioneer souls who through all their hardships kept their faith in God. Let us strengthen those ties by never letting the curtain fall between the present and the past. Thank you. Thank you, Glenda. I told Susan Daniel that I'd put in a little plug. I purchased her first 200 years book from the Presbyterian Church and um, welcome now, Reverend Henkel. On behalf of the session of First Presbyterian Church, it is my honor to be here today and especially give thanks for the DAR and the partnership we have to remember uh, the saints who have gone before us. Uh, usually my words fail me, and so this morning I thought it would be appropriate to read a prayer that was prayed by Thomas Jefferson in Washington, D.C. in 1801. Let us pray. Almighty God, who has given us this good land for our heritage, we humbly beseech thee that we may always prove ourselves a people mindful of thy favor and glad to do thy will. Bless our land with honorable ministry, sound learning, and pure manners. Save us from violence, discord, and confusion, from pride and arrogance, and from every evil way. Defend our liberties and fashion into one united people, the multitude brought hither out of many kindreds and tongues. Endow thy spirit of wisdom, those whom in thy name we entrust the authority of government, that there may be justice and peace at home, and that through the obedience to thy law we may show forth thy praise among the nations of the earth. In time of prosperity, fill our hearts with thankfulness. And in the days of trouble, 
suffer not our trust in thee to fail, all of which we ask through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Before we conduct the rededication of the monument, I would like to thank the city of Murfreesboro Parks and Recreation Department. Um, they've had a very busy year with the bicentennial events, and they were very helpful to us um, this week uh, getting set up here today. So thank you, Nate, and your team. Appreciate it. The DAR has a ritual uh, for rededications of monuments, and I'm going to read from it, and then we will unveil the monument. To all who pa pause in this place, may this marker make effective the voice of the memorial. May it remind them of the nobility of the life well lived and quicken their response of acknowledgement of the ever continuing call to unselfish service. Nothing is really ended until it is forgotten. Whatever is kept in memory still endures. Therefore, we the members of the Colonel Hardy Murphy chapter, National Society, Daughters of the American Revolution, dedicate this marker in grateful recognition of the significance of this site. May it help to keep alive an appreciation of our heritage. And please raise up. Unfortunately, folks, the, the plaque faces Vine Street, so you'll have to take a look at it in a minute. And we are rededicated. Thank you. The marker inscription, what it actually says is on the inside of your program, on the, on the left-hand side, now, our honorary chapter regent, Leslie Dodd Carl, and any other honorary chapter regents who are present, please accompany Leslie with the wreath to the marker. It's a beautiful wreath. Thank you, Leslie. May the blessings of God rest upon and abide here forever. Amen.